Um, so hello and welcome to our end of season review with manager Chris Hardy. Um, in this we'll go over most things of the 2022-2023 season. Firstly Chris, how are you feeling? In person or about the 2022-2023 uh, season? In person. Yeah, I'm feeling good mate. Um, obviously I've had a little bit of time to reflect after the 22nd. Um, so yeah, like you say, I've got a, a week's worth of recovery um, and we're back into the the preparations and, and planning for the for the new season now. Firstly, I think it would be best to go over the recruitment of the squad. Obviously, with having a massive overhaul of the squad last year, only retaining seven of last year's playing squad and a couple of pre-season invites. Were they the, the players that were invited and retained, were they the players you were looking to add on to the squad that you'd assembled with Leon over the summer? Y yeah, I mean, we knew that what we did in the relegation threatened season um, we knew that the group wasn't strong enough. We knew that we had to make some improvements, but we we also wanted to give guys who we thought had potential the opportunity to play with better players in a different environment. Um, bear in mind, that environment was very consumed by, by relegation. Um, it lacked confidence. Um, there clearly were, were certain players that that weren't going to be invited back, um, but we wanted to try and give the benefit of the doubt to, to others. Um, and I think some of these players have stepped up, some of them haven't, and and again, the squad continues to evolve. I mean, obviously we won't go over every, every sign in detail, but there was a few high-profile signs very early on, such as Craig Gott, James Risborough, James Fairley. How much convincing was putting to them as joining a team which had just survived from relegation to... You know, either take the step down from leagues or coming from solid teams themselves? I can tell you now um, that the recruitment that we had to do in the summer <clears throat> was difficult because ultimately what you're trying to do is you're trying to sell somebody um, you're trying, trying to tell somebody a vision of something that was quite the opposite to what it was the season previous. Um, so fair play at the lights of um, Craig and James and James because these guys had offers, <clears throat> these guys, guys had other options um, but we worked hard on them, we put good packages together for the players, um, we knew what, what we were trying to achieve and, and these guys bought into that um, and we had to make a start, we had to we had to bring quality in, and that was quality in the three names that you mentioned, and that was always going to be a, a good building block for us going forward. Obviously, with I mean, when we brought them key, key players, and you've also brought in Northern experience, such as you had Matty, Matty Weas, who played a number of years in the Northern League, now you've played a number of years. Um, but we also had a lot of players who were probably having their first breakout season per se, like Dean Burles, Ben before he got his injury, um, even like Josh Daly before he dropped back down to for whatever reasons. Um, so was that always the aim to have the mix of experience and youth in the squad? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think in an ideal world, you would have an unlimited budget and you'd bring in the best players out there, but it doesn't always work like that because ultimately you've got to make sure that the numbers balance and with experienced players tends to come, you know, cost. Um, inexperienced, not so much. So you've got to try and get your blends right to make sure that the uh, the numbers match up when it comes to the the commercials of the football club. I mean, obviously now we'll move on to the actual season. I know pre-season probably wasn't the best, um, with us not scoring as many goals as anyone would have liked. But we kind of put that to bed straight away in the first game of the season against Pickering, who were an unknown quantity. And then a couple of days later, we beat Whitley Bay four 0 what we are, were you happy with things as things started to go to plan with them early couple of games? Yeah, and I was happy with things in pre-season. I think, you know, from maybe the outside looking in, we were we were getting beat every pre-season game. Um, but I think what you've got to be mindful of in that instance is that we chose a very difficult, a tough, a demanding pre-season in terms of our opposition. Um, so for us to be winning games against the calibre of opposition that we, you know, we paired ourselves up against it was always going to be difficult. Um, we didn't score any goals in pre-season. Um, we didn't score enough goals in pre-season, and again, that clearly had something to do with the uh, the calibre of opposition. Um, was it something I was overly concerned about going into the season? No, it wasn't. It was brought to my attention on a number of occasions by a number of different people. 
Um, but you know, in the first couple of games, we put that to bed straight away in terms of playing teams at our at the respective level um, and blowing teams away. You know, with lots of chances created and, and goals um, scored. I mean, obviously, the following week we played Gisborne in the FA Cup with what you probably say was a weak team, missing Gotti, Niall, Louis. Um, was it good to have see like players like Kieran, who I think, if I remember, I came off the bench to score and you know, give us the win in that game. Is it like good to have them who were more squad players make the impact? Well, if you were solely reliant upon a eleven, then you fail. You know, we've got to have a, a group that can that can deal with you know absentees, um, and there was a number of absentees on that particular day. Um, so yeah, like you say, we managed to to use the squad. We managed to. Um, to get performance levels out of people and, and more importantly we managed to get a result. I mean then um, the next two games were, I think I think everyone agree two frustrating defeats both Carlisle City and West um, in two games where you look back and go oh, well maybe they change but then we immediately turned it around and went to five game win streak with the win over Kendall Penrith CM West Lockman and the eventual title win is Aircliff um, most of them well, a couple of them sides being in the top five and I think all of them being in the top Ten or so, was it you know good to see that we can beat teams who were in the round in the round where we wanted to finish? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the two games that we got beat in, Carlisle, I'll never understand how we didn't get anything from that game. I think in terms of a one-sided game, you'll never see anything more one-sided in in all your time. Um, West Auckland, obviously derby game, we didn't turn up. First 45 minutes, made a bit of a fist of it. Second 45, derby game, could go either way. And then put like a, a sustained um, you know, run of uh, performances and results together against teams, as you rightly said, that finished in the, the higher realms of the uh, the league. And then after that five-game win shoot, we then faced your form side and Whitby in the FA Cup, which, despite it being a 5-0 scoreline, they defeated. If, to my memory, it didn't seem like it was a 5-0 defeat. There was a couple of moments here and then they just they scored off them. Was it maybe good to see that a team that two leagues high who very constant like mid table playoff team, um, that we could put up a fight against them despite losing five now? Yeah, I mean the score line didn't read particularly well, um, but I agree with yourself. I, I think as much as we got thumped in the score line, I don't think the um, the performance suggested you know that was the case. Um, Maybe he's naivety in certain instances, and and Whitby being quite clinical in certain instances, you know, was our undoing on the day. But um, but yeah, like you say, we we went there with a with a confidence. We went there, you know, looking to get a positive result, um, and we were we were undone by by moments that a team of Whitby's caliber and and level you would expect to um, to capitalise on. I mean, then we immediately bounced back in probably the best way possible on the Wednesday with a 7-1 away win over local rivals Crook. And then I think we went, in a, we, well, we went and beat Newcastle Benfield not long afterwards. To The bounce back was possibly the best thing you could have seen. Yeah, I mean, the fashion that we did it against Crook, I think that's one of our better performances you know, for the season. Um, we were very, very fluent on the evening. We scored lots of goals. Um, Probably could have scored a lot more, truth be told, um, but really dominant, uh, clinical in what we were doing. So the reaction was was good. Um, and then, like you say, we played Benfield and we we beat Benfield. Benfield, who I thought in that instance were probably one of the best sides we've played, or certainly best teams we came up against. Um, you know, in that moment, you know, they were very very good in the day. They you know asked a lot of questions of us. But we managed to uh, to get a positive result. So yeah, two two very pleasing results. I mean, then um, immediately we played North Allerton, which it, if it was one one, if I remember right, it was a it, obviously it turns out to be a frustrating draw in the end. But after them two positive results, then you have a frustrating draw afterwards. It must have been like a bit of a killer at the time we won. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously we're looking to win games of football week in week out, and unfortunately our. Opponents are also looking to do that, and um, and I think we came up against a very resilient, um, robust North Allerton side on the evening. Um, you know, and, and a share of the spoils, spoils wasn't probably a million miles off um, where the you know the result should have ended up. But but yeah, if you're looking for for continuity and you're looking to try and win games, then 
then certainly at home to North Allerton is, is a game we should have been picking up three points. I mean, then we started our FA Vars campaign again with a 3 2 away win at Sunderland last year, which, if I remember rightly, it was, we went, I think it was 2 0 and then 2 2 and then 3 2 in the end, uh, winners. Was, you know, doing well in the FA Vars, something we always look to do, although in the end we actually went out in the next round. Yeah, I think the FA Vars <clears throat> is any. Northern League sides that have got aspirations will target the Vars and target doing well in the Vars. And we were no different. I think one of the biggest issues with the Vars is the early rounds. You tend to get paired against teams of the, the same league. And going away to Sunderland last year wasn't a, a particularly good draw for us. So to get the job done was, was a bit of a relief and it just it kept us obviously involved in the competition um, and teed us up for, a, for another crack at it. I mean, also in that time, we re-signed Marcus Giles permanently. Was Marcus a target in the summer or was it something that just became available at the time we acted the fastest to bring him in? I mean, no, Marcus wasn't a target in the summer because I think Marcus was fairly committed to, to what he was doing with Whitby. Um, but obviously, given the, the stint that he had with us the season prior, you know, we knew that, that if Marcus was going to become available, then, then we should certainly um, explore that. And we've managed to get Marcus in the building. Um, good player, obviously got an eye for goal. Um, so yeah, like you say, we were pleased with that bit of business. I mean, then, well, in the period just on Marcus side, we went on a five-game win streak, including four women over Billingham Town, who it proved to be a bit of a, a side and team sound with obviously not Ashton out the FA Vars. Was it a game where we? I know it was in the Challenge Cup, but was it a game you may be thinking, oh, could this be a potential banana skin, or was it always? I think on them particular fixtures, you know, when you're playing against lesser opposition, i.e. Division 2, you know, you just want to be, you don't want to be complacent on the evening, you want to give your opponents the amount of respect that, you know, that they warrant, um, and you hope that performances will get you over the finish line, and in the end, like I say, I think we were, we were far superior on the evening. I mean, then... I think we'll go back to a, a, another frustrating draw, which appears to be a theme at the minute, um, is when we drew 2-2 with Redka, but although we did equalise in the last kicks of the game, is it a positive one where we got the point out of it, or is it a frustrating draw? Well, it, I think you look at it in two different ways. Before the game, you know, you, you're disappointed that you're not taking all three points, but during the game, you're you know, pleased that you do manage to actually get a point. And, and fair play to Redka Athletic on the evening, you know, I thought they were... They were very lively in what they were doing. They, they came up with a game plan that sort of stifled our game plan. Um, and I think they were worthy of getting something out of the fixture. So as much as we're dropping points on the evening in theory prior to the game, um, I think it was a probably a, a fair share of the spoils, all said and done. I mean, then obviously we first Bury in the FA Vars, and as I mentioned, that was the round we got knocked out in. But at the time, well, we were chasing the game one down in uh, James Risbury gets sent off for... Something I think we can all just describe as a frustrating moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, first 45 minutes, I think we we probably should be doing better in certain situations in front of goal. And maybe it's given ourselves um, something more substantial in terms of um, holding on to something. Um, I think when when James has got himself sent off, and it was petulant, and we've had the conversation, and like you say, it's been and it's gone. Um, it did prove to be a, you know, a, a pivotal point in the game. Um, I think we did need 11 men on the field to be able to get something from the fixture, and I think we did need a better um, calibre in front of goal in terms of making sure that we, that we were more clinical. Um, we certainly didn't need to be making mistakes, so I think with mistakes, plus the sending off, plus not being clinical in front of goal, it contributed to a to a frustrating afternoon and and one that, that I sort of earmarked before the game as being whoever was to go on and be, you know, still involved in the competition, yeah. in my opinion, would go quite far in the competition. And I think that's proved to be the case because I think the last check, I think Buddy were in the quarterfinals and potentially yeah. being knocked out on pens. Um, so, yeah, like you said, I think there was two good sides on show that day and Buddy came out probably worthy winners in the end. I mean, obviously not long after we went and then signed Dean Texan from Sheldon. Obviously a, a well-known striker in the Northern League, relatively local to the club. 
when Dean became available to sign, was it always something you looked at and saying it could add something because of his goals you'll, you'll always have there? Yeah, I mean, Dean, like you say, is an experienced player. Um, I felt we were maybe a little bit light in the forward area, so we were looking for a centre forward when Dean became available. It was a no-brainer. Like you say, he's a local lad. Um, he's got a, a proven calibre at this level and beyond. So, yeah, it was a, it was a no-brainer. I mean, obviously, he had a brief cameo versus West Lock Metallic, but then was given probably a, a start, which I don't think he maybe expected, and maybe he didn't, but good with Gotti dropping out versus North Allerton and him getting a hat trick. Is it something that it was probably the best start for a striker? Well, uh, strikers can't get better starts than that, can they? Like you say, you know, the, they're in the starting 11, um, the score on a hat trick, we're winning the game, um, you know, all that confidence, you know, exists on the back of it. Like you say, you know, and teammates seeing the new guy scoring a hat trick. It, like you say, it was the perfect start. I mean, then obviously we had the we travelled to Ashton, which uh, well we had a week inside. It's best probably to describe it with missing Gotti for injury, Munch through suspension, and Wayne for personal reasons. Um, the first twenty minutes or so, would you say it was quite an even game from memory? And then I remember Dean going down and they just they flipped the head of the game. And well, they obviously ran out five no winners, but was it one of the games where you, just, you looked at it and go like, if we have this available, this available team doesn't go down. Is it go, does it go a different way? Does it not? Possibly, possibly. I think, I think Dean picking up the injury at the time that he did, I think it was it seemed to be quite pivotal. Um, I think they had a couple of key performances on the day. Harmison, I thought, played particularly well. And on the back of that, the bits that they that they took on, the strikes that they made, seemed to find the back of the net um, at key moments. Um, frustrating afternoon, do I think it warranted the scoreline? Probably not. But at the same time, it was a, a bit of a reminder that, you know, unless we're doing the right things, unless we've got, you know, the right people on the park, um, then we could be vulnerable. I mean, then we obviously went on to play West Auckland again, which was a 3-3 draw after... I think being 3-1 down, I think, well, obviously Niall got sent off that game as well. Um, but then they started this awkward run of where we didn't really have any games with games being called off. I remember right, we had Brandon called off three or four times. Then we played them and then I think we maybe played one or two games afterwards. Was that just month to two months just really awkward for the group? It was like you couldn't really bounce back, you couldn't get anything back. Listen, Joe, I think from a football point of view, what you want is you want consistency. You want consistency in performances. You want consistency in fixtures being played. Um, and if you've got that inconsistency in and around games being postponed and weekends without fixtures, it's disruptive. And it's disruptive for, for us as a group. It's disruptive for the next football um, club. Like you say, you want consistency. We didn't get it. You can point the finger at, you know, the inconsistency in around our schedule has been possibly a contributing factor, um, but it just doesn't help. Yeah. That's the bottom line. I mean, then obviously, um, probably the first game back before we start actually playing games regularly was Newton Aircliffe on the twenty seventh, which I think being two 0 up in the game, and then Anthony Callahan gets brought on, a former player, and um, it proceeds to have the best game I've seen him play. Um, and then they went ran out eight, eight well, three two winners, and then it probably kick started their run for the title. Was it was it a frustrating day in general? Or? Yeah, very much so. I think I think from the point of view of going there, we went there with an air of confidence. I think from the point of view of being tuned it up, um, that probably wasn't the way that the game had been to that point. But I think at two nil, you know, we should be doing an awful lot better to manage the game. But I just thought Newton Aircliffe on the day just seemed to have a more of an appetite, seemed to play the non-league game better than what we did on a difficult playing surface. Um, like you say, and Callahan obviously hitting what he did in the way that he did. Um, fair play to him. You know, we certainly didn't see that at Bishop Auckland, but sometimes all players come to bite you on the backside, and that's clearly what happened on that particular fixture. But on the whole, Newton Aircliffe were better on the day. You know, they just had more off than what we did. I mean, then obviously, the next fixture was kickstart in the new year with a 5 0 win over Crook. Again, obviously, it had just been taken over by new management at the time. Was that something key to just have that result there? We 
you know, we've got a win again after probably in a period because we haven't really won in the league because we haven't played many for a while. Was it getting the confidence back? And then obviously I know a few days later we went and played Twenty in the Durham Challenge Cup, which I think in that game was probably a lot closer than the actual well, the three one score line, despite the levels in the teams. I think the crook game um probably came at a good time. I think when we play down here at HP, you know, we are we're fancied on every occasion. Um and this fixture was no different. Um ran out worthy winners in the end, you know, I think I think maybe the fixture might have came a little bit too soon for Crook in terms of their transition from old management to new management, um, a bit of a change in personnel. Um, but like you say, we ran out worthy winners. And then going into um, into the Spennymo fixture, we seem to go to Spennymo a depleted, truth be told, and, and we went there with a reduced um, squad, nowhere near where it should have been. And then we had some issues before kick-off in terms of changes that need to be made. We had some issues during the game and changes that needed to be made. Um, I think we, first 45 minutes, probably given a little bit of a run around in, in wide areas and, and we didn't come to terms with that. But then second 45, I think we, we sort of, we give a decent account of ourselves and we made a little bit of a fist of it towards the back end. But unfortunately, you know, the... The numbers that were available on the evening, the calibre of opposition, and it was a fairly strong spending with side that was fielded. Um, it was a bridge too far for us, truth be told. I mean, obviously, I think if we got we can't enter the spending with game without probably the the Ben injury, which is it just kind of was a bit of a it's a bit of a kill of Ben, but also at the time it left us with one centre half cross, if my memory serves me right. Dale had literally just signed for Thornby on that day. Was it one of these ones of where? Uh, Maybe if it, if we kicked off, I'm not saying maybe we kicked off half an hour earlier, but if if time would have been a bit different, maybe we would have kept Dale and things have been a bit different. Yeah, I mean, like you say, I think from Dale's point of view, he he was as patient as he could be. Um, I think both Ben and Niall made the shirts their own. Um, and like you say, <clears throat> Dale was as patient as he could be. The opportunity for Dale to go across to Thornaby was was clearly a good opportunity for him. Um, 24 hours later, then Dale would have been picking up the shirt from Ben, and I have no doubts that Dale would have, you know, seen the rest of the season out in that position. It's time and, and it's football, and sometimes these things happen. We did try and hijack the deal and and get Dale um, back in the in the um, in the fold. Um, but Dale, being the bloke that he that he is, had made his you know verbal commitment to uh, to Thornaby, and for that reason, like you say, off he went to uh, to Thornaby. I mean, then not long after we went to Pickering with, I mean, probably a bit of a makeshift defence anyway, with three fullbacks playing with Dale, Dane, Munch, and Kieran, all in the back four. I mean, I think we can all describe that game as another one, but a bit like Carlisle City early in the season where they've won one nil through a wonder strike by a former player again. <laughs> Um, it's a theme here, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. Just, it, just, it, it was probably a game where I think we all just kind of got there. It was a little bit frustrating because, you know, I mean, Bradley just hit one of the top. How many times have we seen Bradley take that shot for us and it sailed over the bar, sailed out the stadium? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it just yeah. went in. I think the, the Pickering game is, is certainly one that sticks in my throat. Um, you know, I think without being brilliant on the day, we've created enough opportunities to win the game comfortably. You know, with or without a Bradley Mills strike at the at the death, um, we haven't done that. So I think we leave ourselves vulnerable. And then obviously for Brad to step in, you know, at the very death um, and smash one in the top bin, fair play to him. Great kid. Um, disappointed it didn't work out for Brad at um, at Bishops. But like I say, you know, I've got no issues with Brad, um, and I've got certainly no issues with Brad. You know having the glory in that moment because unfortunately on the day we didn't do enough to win the game you know if we'd have scored two three it wouldn't have made a blind bit of difference you know Brad doing that or not doing it but as it turned out at nil nil you know it was the uh, decisive moment it was the game changing moment it was um, it was a real um, blow for us you know because I think top of the league were we top of the league at the time yeah were they bottom of the league you know, it's got all the 
the hallmarks of a banana skin, you know, top versus bottom, X player smashing one in injury time, you know, to take all three points and unfortunately that's the way it panned out. I mean, then we did have a bit of a two week break for obviously games being postponed again. Um, we did play with being a mid season friendly here, um, being a 3 2 scoreline. Um, if I remember right, that is, we just signed Danny Lay recent, um, at that time. The first time we saw Danny, obviously, he was suspended for the game afterwards. But was it good to have maybe that friendly just to put him in the environment so he's used to playing with the group? Yeah, I, I, th I feel that because of the, again, the inconsistency of consistency in and around fixtures. Um, we had to put that friendly in there. It certainly um, served well for Danny to get game time. Um, it was a it was a competitive friendly. It was a friendly that I thought we did particularly well in, um, more so the second half. Um, but again, really, we shouldn't need to be putting friendlies in the middle of the season to to tick people over. But there was a massive need for it because we were we were being starved of game time. I mean, then obviously we had a. Uh... Two frustrating games afterwards, be it both um, against Gisborne and Seaham, both 2 0 up, both drawn 2 2. How did you feel that, Brooks, when you look at the form guide at that, at that moment, we'd played 5 1 1 and lost the rest? Was that something that you, you looked at and went, oh, oh, this is, um, oh, no? No, no. I think from the point of view of um, both fixtures being at home, um, from the point of view of us having success against both these t uh, sides previously, you know, we went into it confident. Um, unfortunately, the way the game panned out in terms of taking a 2-0 two lead, two lead in both fixtures and then conceding far too much um, pressure from the, the opposition and unfortunately crumbling on the back of it, um, that was concerning. That was very concerning because clearly there was game management that wasn't happening, there was a bit of character that was that was probably missing, um, decision making wasn't quite right, and to see it happen a couple of games on the bounce was was very, you know, worrying really, especially given the fact that we've dropped four points on the back of it. So that got addressed, that got addressed behind closed doors. Um, and I think we went on to make improvements on the back of that. But unfortunately, two games, if that had happened at different stages of the season, then you wouldn't have put you know an awful lot of um, light on that and concern around that, um, but given the fact that they happened back to back, there was something that needed to be you know uh, put right on the back of that. I mean, obviously the next game we did we went travel to Wickham, won three 0 quite convincingly. Was it maybe good to bounce back? Even we did take the two 0 lead again, and I think. From where I was, and I had a number of people around me who had a bit of a, a worry, and then when we scored the third, the worry just disappeared. Was it just good to have that back? Yeah, it was. I mean, you say comfortable. I don't think it was comfortable, a Wickham game. I remember rightly, first 45, it was nil-nil. It was, it was nip and tuck. Um, and then we showed some good quality um, in the second 45 to, to convert. And, and maybe just could have won the game by a bigger margin. Um, but yeah, like you say, I think the importance of a reaction, the importance of a positive result was, was paramount to keep a clean sheet as well. Obviously, that's another you know big plus there. So, it was a it was a very pleasing result. Actually, yeah, one thing I forgot to bring up was um, the signing of Ryan Catrick um, just after Christmas. Was Ryan a player? Who, well, obviously, I know we'd signed Nick onto a new contract in the summer, but when Ryan came available, was it more the fact of we all we all knew Ryan's qualities as a goalkeeper? Was it pouncing on it so nobody else would pick Ryan up? I think. When players of Ryan's calibre become available, and if you're serious about what you're doing, then you've got to, you've got to be interested, and, and we definitely were interested. I think from Nick's point of view, you know, Nick's been a, a fantastic servant at the football club, um, a good goalkeeper. Um, but in terms of where we wanted to move the um, the playing side of the of the football club, it is a little bit more possession based, um, and I do feel that there isn't many better than Ryan in terms of what he does with the ball at his feet. Um, big, a big factor, um, and I think as soon as we could do that business, albeit the timing wasn't brilliant, because like you say, Nick is a contracted player, and at the time it would have meant that we had two recognised number ones at the football club, but the opportunity to sign Ryan may have 
never appeared again. Um, so I think in the moment, you know, it was the right decision to to um, to get after Ryan and, and try and get Ryan to the football club. I mean, obviously we did play Tao Law as well um, just after Wigan, but before the night before Tao Law, we'd actually brought in Dale Hobson, um, a player I know who had a lot of success for you at Whitby, um, a player who's proven in the league above, um, the league above and the league above that. Was it a player when you when Dale was available from Mascus? I know at the time they were having a, a very interesting series, uh, time with their management. When Dale became available, was it more the fact of I could bring him in and have a player of Dale's quality around the club? Yeah, I mean, I think for those that have seen Dale play, he's, um, he's an excellent ball player. And I think when players of Dale's calibre, again, similar to Ryan, would become available, you know, you've got to explore these options. Um, we thought that bringing Dale in would, would complement the group. We thought that bringing Dale in would give us, you know, a little bit extra in terms of um, ball retention, particularly at home. Um, so in speaking with the chairman and, and getting that one signed off, you know, it was providing Dale was up for it, which he, he definitely was. Um, it was just a matter of just getting it over the finish line and, and getting him made available as quickly as possible. I mean, obviously, um, we signed. We, well, after we signed there, we played Tal Law the next day um, in a six-one win. Which, but the first probably three minutes, I think, it was a bit of a panic because we went one 0 up, and then it felt like you you blinked and they'd equalised, and then we went and scored a couple more. But in that type of game, was it more of figuring out? Oh well, Tal Law, you know, they're a bit of a they're either hit or miss. And when we when it was a one-one again, we were like, oh, what's this game going to be? Or was it more of seeing how? The group will they react? Yeah, we, we were looking for the the right reaction. Um, I think the game was going to be the way the game was going to be. It was you know it was a lively playing surface. Um, we knew that in creating chances and with good composure and quality that we convert and goals change games and and that's the way it turned out. And, and Dale obviously contributing in the way that he did with the goals that he scored was um, was a big factor in that fixture. I mean, and then. A couple of days later, we went to Redka. Um, an interesting game, shall we say, with the two red cards to both key players for probably avoidable situations. Was it one of them games where you look at it and you go, oh, no, no, what's going to happen here? Yeah, it's that's a fixture that, that I earmarked a long time ago as being a very difficult fixture. And, and I think for anyone that's played at Redka, they'll know that the surface tends to be quite lively. Um, quite often there's always a, a blizzard blowing up and down the pitch. Um, and it's a difficult place to go. You know, Redka have obviously made some improvements. Um, and like you say, we're proven to be one of the form sides. Um, and the Bishop Auckland scalp was clearly on their agenda. That being said, um, you know, playing against the wind in the first 45 minutes, we we put ourselves in a position that meant there was a lot of work to do second 45, but I think if we could have just maintained our, our discipline, composure, kept doing the right things, because it was a game of repetition, um, I do feel that something would have dropped in, but unfortunately we got emotions involved and we got a couple of cards that, that made the job nigh on impossible, albeit we did give a bit of a, a go towards the back end and, and came very close to, to getting something out of the fixture. But I do feel that that was quite pivotal, that particular fixture in terms of, of going there, not getting beat. Um, and to get beat was was disappointing. Obviously then we played, well, we played hard games against Whitley Bay, Benfield and Thornaby. All hard games in their own right. Um, Whitley Bay through. 3 0 win here against the right, a team who were pushing us as well for the top three, top two at the time. Um, that 3 0 win was it something of maybe just we made a bit of a gap between ourselves and Whitley Bay and we knew we were, we've given ourselves the best position to get in the top two. Yeah, and I think not only a, a gap in, in a points context, but also in a psychological context as well because clearly we were much the better side on the day. Uh, that was very, very evident. And I think that was going to board well for us, you know, in the running, going towards the back end of the season, because Whitley Bay and ourselves have always been in the mix from, from day dot. Um, and like you say, Whitley Bay continued to be in the mix, but I do feel there was 
there was a difference in the two sides and the and the quality sat with ourselves in that particular fixture. I mean, obviously Benfield as well, another tight game with it being another 1-0 win over them on possibly the coldest day of the year. The first time I've seen a pitch freeze during a game. Um, yeah, the challenges of non-league football, mate. But just going back to your Thornaby um, um, observation there as well. Thornaby, um, again, top end of the table against bottom end of the table. You know, the, the result should have been a formality. It certainly wasn't that. Um, we had personnel issues. We had to shovel the back. Danny Lay went up top. Um, Danny Lay ended up scoring a couple of goals and led from the front um, in a fixture that was where we were made to really work for the three points. Um, Thornaby obviously fighting for the lives. Um, so, like you said, that was a really pleasing one and one that kept us in the mix, one that allowed us to you know, keep momentum. And then, as you say, we go to Benfield on a Tuesday night, not an easy place to go. As you've mentioned, we've got a pitch freezing halfway through. I think we huffed and puffed on the evening, truth be told, and we've managed to get you know, a, a, a well-taken goal by Matty Weirs that's got us over the finish line. One of them ones, you know, get in, get out, take all three points and on to the next one. I mean, then, obviously, uh, just after Thornaby, we played Wickham at home, which 2-0, frustrating defeat. Um, what what was your actual looking back now? What is your thoughts on that? Yeah, my my thoughts are quite vivid on this one in terms of. I think for whatever reason, I don't know whether we were we were maybe experiencing a little bit of, bit of a confidence issue, but for whatever reason, at home under lights, we decide we're not going to play. We decide that we're going to go back to front. Um, we set up a, a 50-50 game um, and I think we were we were outdone in that respect you know the the first and second balls were were, were, were far better um, dealt with by Wickham and as a result that created momentum for them to go on and win the game you know as worthy winners in my opinion I mean then obviously we played on Darcy at home which well, they've had a, a, a very interesting second half of the season. I think we all kind of came to the game knowing, knowing we should have, we should really win without any issues, and we did in the end, really. Yeah, we did, and, and it it wasn't so much in the end. It was we did, and that that was it. You know, I think Sun and I say we're going through a bit of a, a torrid time. I don't think they had subs on the on the bench. Um, maybe he's one. Um, you know, and. And in fairness, that you know, barring an absolute disaster on our behalf, that was never going to be anything other than three points. I mean, then we had the, the Carlisle City away game, which again, it, it feels like they had our number this season. The two games we played them, um, a game where we just it, we didn't feel like we turned up again. Um, also, with a couple of other issues regarding the officials on the day. Um, looking back at that, is that a one way you, you highlight and go? Maybe this, you know, not saying it is the exact result reason we didn't get into the top two, but is it looking at it is potentially one of the results we didn't reason we didn't? Well, I think anyway, you're dropping points is is a contributing factor. Um, but what I will say is, you know, as much as Carlisle did the double over us, you know, the how Carlisle won that first game is beyond me, completely, utterly beyond me. That second game, Carlisle were probably worthy winners. Because unfortunately, um, we didn't do enough of the the dirty, horrible stuff to compete in that game and give ourselves the platform to go on and win the game. Carlisle, the, the task, they were they were mobile, they were they were lively, they were they were physical, um, but not over physical, um, and stuck and like I say, stuck to their game plan which eventually, like I say, had the three points drop in. Unfortunately for us, we didn't have the answers on that particular day, whereas the first fixture against Carlisle, 85% possession, 25 attempts on goal, it was a completely different game. It was a control game. But as I say, that second game against Carlisle, you know, I think Carlisle, there's a real case that Carlisle were worthy winners on the day. I mean, then we had the, the bank holiday double over Pete and Sanat and Penrith. Both again hard fixtures in their own right. Eaton, and if I'm right in saying we're the only team in the top four not to lose to them. 
Um, but obviously, at the half-time, it was a bit of a different story in that game. Was it something that when, when they were 1-0 up, there was, we needed the reaction of hoping they didn't you know, have a massive say in the title race, as they seemed like they were doing? And then... Uh, oh, where am I going with this? Yeah, so, again, I think from Heat and Stan's point of view, at half-time, 1-0 up, which clearly um, was alarm bells for ourselves. Um, we've come out to second half. We've managed to get you know a goal back early doors. That seemed to settle the guys, and then we got into stride. And I think in the end, ran out you know worthy winners in that fixture. Potentially a difficult fixture, um, but we've got it. I think at this stage, at that stage of the season. You're wanting to chalk things off. You're wanting to say that's another three points onto the next one. Was there much focus going on the uh, the level of performance? Probably not. We're, we're into the business end now. We're talking about you know putting points on the board, and the objective was to ensure that we put points on the board because if we weren't putting points on the board, then everything that we played for the season to date would start to slip away. So it was massively important that, like you say, we got the three points. Obviously, and then Penrith on the um, bank holiday on Monday. Again, they were in a position where I think if they had won that game, they would have confirmed survival, which they eventually did. But was it one of these games where, obviously it was nil-nil at half-time and it was like, you felt we were on top, but there was always this chance of they could go down the other end, they could nick one and then shut up shop. Was it just a glad thing that we got the three points and then got, got out, basically? Yeah, I mean, I think at half-time, nil's a piece. Albeit I thought we were very comfortable in the game. Um, there is a danger that you're fighting the clock. There is a danger that time starts to disappear. There is a danger that frustration kicks in. There is then a danger that the opposition get one on a counter-attack or on a transition. Um, and then you're in that awkward position. But as it turned out, second 45... The chances that we created in the first 45 then started to find the back of the net, like you say, with um, some well-taken goals. And I think on reflection for the, the game with Penrith, it was comfortable in the end. It was really, um, it was controlled. It was, we, we outplayed Penrith, we outscored them um, and a very worthy three points. I mean... I think everyone knew at the start of the season it was always going to come down to the last game of the season versus Ashton. I think it was always... We were hoping. ...written in the stars. We were hoping. Obviously, a 1-1 draw versus them is... If you take the context of the game out, it's not a bad result, but obviously needing the win, it just didn't go our way, really. No, it didn't. And I think the 22nd against Ashton, and I said this to the chairman you know, many moons ago, it would have been nice if we were playing for the title. That wasn't to be because Newton Aircliffe were head and shoulders and the, better, the best side over the course of the season. So we're playing for a runner-up spot, which ultimately would have given you know, the winner an opportunity to, um, to go into the playoffs and potentially get promotion that way. So going into the fixture, like you say, we'd done all the, the hard work to ensure that the game meant something. Um, we had nearly 900 people watching the game. A um, little bit of a concern prior to the game. Would it be on, given the amount of rainfall that we'd had? Anyway, the guys had done a cracking job on the pitch and got that ready, so we're ready to go. Um, first 45 minutes, I think taking the lead was all important. Um, I think the game... It, we maybe slightly edged the first 45 minutes without really controlling the game. And then second 45 minutes, sadly... We haven't turned up. We we didn't control the game. We didn't contest the game. Um, we didn't create the chances that were required for us to get some daylight between us and Ashington. Ashington, like you say, with some of the experienced players that they've got, they found form, um, they found momentum. They've got themselves a goal, and Baron Ryan, it maybe could have been more than one. It, it probably should have been more than one. Um, so the result wasn't bad. Performance, like you say, I think. Sadly, it wasn't the performance to get us into the playoffs. Um, and as a result of that, Ashington have went into the playoffs and I think as we sit here today, they've been promoted as a result of the playoffs, so fair play to them. But from our point of view, going forward, you know, they are the games that we want to be involved in, big, you know, meaningful games, but clearly our performance levels need to be need to be better than that. 
so obviously that's basically the whole review of the season. Then was a as a whole season. How did you view the season? Um, I think from the point of view of of where the football club was when I first came in, um, we had some damage limitation to do there. We had to ensure that we maintained first division status. Um, we did that, you know, and that was really pleasing. Very difficult time, that by the way. Very very challenging time. Um, the new season obviously brought with it promise, but I think ultimately what maybe has went on in the football club over recent seasons, maybe it was promised that not a lot of people had signed up for and believed in. Um, we knew that we, we had recruited well in the summer. Um, and then First game of the season, always a bit of a nervy one. You know, quite often it's a bit of a 50-50 game because it's the first game of the season. But we just blew Pickering away completely. Um, and that was a real shot in the arm. That was a real um, injection of confidence. And then we just we went on scoring goals and we continued scoring goals and we were outscoring teams and winning games of football. On the back of outscoring teams, we were playing teams off the park, particularly at HP. So I think the season um, up until Christmas, I think went far better than anyone could have expected. I think the second half of the season um, was probably more in line with what I expected for the whole of the season. You know, when pitches turned, we seen a little bit of a change in, in form. Um, results didn't come around as freely as what they did, you know, first half of the season. But I think when all's said and done, <clears throat> for us to have finished third, I think is, um, is a good achievement. I think what we've done is given, you know, the supporters some confidence about what we're doing as a, as a team, as a football club. Um, and now, you know, we're, we're into this critical part of the season, which is close season, where we're going to recruit, we're going to assess the group that we've got currently, and providing we can get the recruitment right, then I would fully be expecting for us to improve upon, you know, last season's. Um, Standing, finishing third. Um, so hopefully, if we can improve on that, then it makes for for more exciting times ahead. Um, I think we have got the the nucleus of a of a very good side at the moment. Um, I do feel that, like I say, it needs you know a couple of players, if not a few players, to come in and help that. Um, and if we can do that, then I think we go again and we we go from strength to strength. Obviously, thank you for doing this, Chris. Um, is there anything you'd like to say at the Bishop Faithful for either the support this season or what do I expect for next season? Well, hopefully, we're going to get, expect more of the same and in addition to that, we're going to go that next one, which is you know trying to win the league. Um, I think, like you say, the, the support has been consistent all the way through, You know, following us away to Pickering, following us up to... Benfield on a Tuesday night, like you say, it's been, you know, the, the players haven't, that hasn't went unnoticed, the players are massively aware of that. It's been noticeable that, like you say, our home performances, sorry, our home gates have increased, which again is excellent and hopefully we can keep pulling in the same direction, we can keep improving the home gates, we can keep the interaction with the players and the management, with supporters, and like you say, we can go on this journey together. All right, cheers Chris, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.